Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope you're all doing really well. Today's video um, has been requested by a couple of people and before I start, I just wanna point out there's loads and loads of videos like this already out there on YouTube and I highly recommend having a look around. Um, everything works differently for different people. But today's video is gonna be about the interview process. I'm gonna specifically focus on medicine at Cambridge rather than medicine at all of the other medical schools because the interview process is quite different depending on which um, medical school you're applying to. So I hope you guys find it useful. Let's get started. So I had my interview in December 2019. Yes, December 2019 at Trinity Hall. So the college I applied to and I applied for medicine. I had two interviews. I had one, uh, both of them had two interviewers and some of them are my supervisors now. So I'm actually having kind of like lessons and supervisions with the people that interviewed me. Um, and they're all kind of doctors or fellows of the college. Each interview was about 20 to 30 minutes long. They kind of took it in turns to interview me. So there were two of them in the room at the time. One of them would do 10 minutes and then write, the other one would write notes. And interviews at Cambridge generally happen kind of mid to late December or like early to late December, so over a period of about two or three weeks. There is a chance if you get pulled in the winter pool, so that's basically where you apply to a college, they really like your application, you're really good, but they just don't have the numbers to accommodate you, then you can get kind of like pulled and taken in by another college and they might want to interview you again and that will be in like January, February time. But generally, most of the interviews happen in December, um, you'll get an email about it in November if you've been invited to interview and then you get about three, two or three weeks to prepare. So for medicine interviews, generally at Cambridge, they're quite science heavy. And I guess um, the best way to prepare for those is to look over all of your GCSE science and A-level science notes. I used a website called Seneca, which is completely free um, unless you pay for the like premium version, but you totally don't need to pay. Um, I did all of my interview prep um, completely like for free. And um, it's really important that you guys don't feel that you have to pay for any courses because like these online courses are making money off your insecurities and telling you that you need to pay to do a course. But if you um, feel like you want any help um, or are not sure how to handle interviews, speak to a teacher at college, at school, there's loads of resources online. But for my revision, for learning the science content needed for my interview, I used a website called Seneca, which I will link down below, but really recommend. It was a really good website and they just revise like all of the content you need really quickly as well. So you can just skim through things. Um, but also before you have your interview, you will submit like a questionnaire called the SAQ, um, if you apply to Cambridge at least. And in that you'll tell them what subjects you've studied and what particular modules you've studied so far in your A-levels. So they won't ask you anything about like photosynthesis or respiration if you haven't studied that yet. So, um, well they might do if they're feeling a bit mean, but um, generally that's how I revised, that's what I covered. So just focus on the science content and then I um, had my interview and I had mine in person. It's a bit different now because, well, this year I did interviews online and I'm not entirely sure how, how that went and how that worked. I had mine in person. So like I said, I had two interviews and two interviewers in each interview. Each one was 20 minutes to 30 minutes long and they were both quite similar in nature, but I'll go through now what each one kind of consisted of and what they asked me. So the first interview I had, I went into the room and um, it was like a supervision room. So there were two sofas and um, like the interviewers were sat on one and they were like, oh, hello Louisa, nice to meet you, please do sit down. So I went and sat down on the other sofa and we shook hands. And then um, they kind of just explained how it works. So they were like, oh, it's gonna be 25 minutes long. We're gonna take it in turns to chat to you and um, just give it a go and tell us what you think. Um, so the first question I got asked was um, really vague. And I think this is quite, I think this is a good thing. And um, although it can be a little bit off-putting, but it, my tip would be if you get given like a really vague question, it's then up to you to choose where you take it. So my question was really vague was, tell me about tissues. So I chose to break it down into cells and then the guy was like, okay, so tell me about cells. And then I broke that down even further into the different um, kind of like macromolecules that make up cells and um, we talked about fats and like carbohydrates and proteins and we talked about that a bit. And basically, I think um, they were just trying to see where I wanted to take the question. I could kind of tell that they were looking for me to 
think and come up with my ideas, which is quite a nice feeling, but also a little bit scary because you're always worried that you're gonna say something that's completely like not related or wrong. And then they gave me a pen, like a whiteboard pen, and there was a whiteboard on the wall. And we were talking about like proteins and carbohydrates and they wanted me to draw a cell membrane. So it's all stuff that you've kind of covered. Um, at the start of the interview, they won't ask you anything you don't really know about, but my opening question was really vague. And also that interviewer didn't make any eye contact with me the whole time, which was a bit off-putting. And I kind of was like, oh, maybe this is a deliberate thing that they're doing um, but that interviewer is now one of my supervisors and he does make eye contact with me now so I think it was just an interview technique to throw me off a little bit it was generally quite a like fun experience and at the end of that little section of that interview um, they asked me a question and I was kind of not too sure and I gave it a guess and I didn't know the answer so they then told me but they actually said that um, it was just a theory so basically the question was like why is there more sodium outside of like cells than potassium and why is there more potassium inside of cells and um there was a, like a theory that they told me about and they basically said it's just a theory no one really knows but um interesting to think about so they're not always expecting you to know the answer but that was that was quite a little fun thing that we did and then the second interview they, so they swapped around and then they swapped like taking notes and asking questions and the second interviewer started by giving me a picture and he was like have you ever seen this drawing before and it was a, um, a drawing of like a horse lying down by the side of a river somewhere. And it had like a huge column uh, of like liquid and person, and it was like stuck in the horse's neck. And he was like, so tell me what you, what you can see. And I was kind of like, well, there's a horse and he's got something in his neck and it looks like glass. And he was like, well, it's not quite glass. What's, what's inside the glass? And I said, oh, it looks like a liquid. And so he said, so what, what do you think the, the liquid in the glass could be representing? And actually it turns out it was representing like the blood pressure and it was one of the first ever recordings of uh, measuring blood pressure. So that was really cool. But I, again, I had like, it was completely foreign to me. I had no idea, but they will ask you these things that are completely like related to what you've been studying. So we've been studying the heart and blood pressure and how that all works, but not like this before. I found that quite exciting that they were talking about um, applying what I already knew in a different and exciting context and that's one of the things they will really do at interviews in Cambridge and you've just got to enjoy it and I thought that was really cool and then they gave me a kind of related to the picture they gave me like a, um, a blood pressure monitor from like a long time ago and it had mercury in it and they were like so so tilt it up and down and see what you can see and tell me what you think and I can see the little column of mercury and then they asked me like a really random question it was like so guess what the density of mercury is and it's things like this where I, I kind of was like, wow, I, I mean, I really don't know, but the, the density of water is, you know, this. And so metal, like metals are heavier. So I talked about that and then I kind of guessed and I wasn't, you know, not too far off, but not, not quite right. Um, but the guy was really nice about it. And I kind of was like, oh, I really don't know. I'm just going to have to guess. And he was like, that's fine. Just guess, just guess, you know. Um, and I think a lot of the time they want to see if you're, um, up for the challenge. You don't have to know the answer, but if you give them an answer, that's better than not giving them any answer. That was quite a, quite an exciting interview. I quite enjoyed like looking at the picture and the blood pressure monitor. So I thought that was quite good fun. And they both seemed really nice. And those two are actually the supervisors that we're gonna have. So I've got one of them this year and one of them next year. Um, so that was the first interview. And then the second one was a bit more kind of tailored to my personal statement, but not in the way that other medical schools will. It was more science-based, as you kind of would expect for Cambridge. So they asked me, I went in, we sat down, but this time there was no sofa. We were sat at a round table, and the two of them were sat like on one side, and I was sat on the other. And I could see when I went in, they had my like portfolio, um, my SAQ like questionnaire that I filled in with my subjects and everything, and it had my picture on it, and I could see they were, had my personal statement in front of them. I was a bit like, oh, they're literally looking at my me on paper right now in front of me. Um, but I also thought, okay, if they're looking at my personal statement, I should know this kind of whatever they ask me inside out. So um, let's see. So then they asked me about, the first thing they asked me was about my EPQ. So they said, I see you've, you've done an EPQ on here. Can you tell me about that? And the thing is, right, this is, this is where it helps if you've done an EPQ or some kind of extracurricular reading and you put it on a personal statement and they ask you about it because you will know about it, you know, you've studied it yourself. So I felt a bit more in my comfort zone here. It wasn't a particularly vague question. I mean, it was still quite vague, like tell me about your EPQ. But um, I could tell them about my EPQ and knew kind of the process that I went through to find and find the research and that kind of thing. So I talked about that. 
Um, and we talked about that for about five or 10 minutes. And then I think they asked me about a bit of extra reading that I'd done or what I thought about. Uh, there was one ethical question that was like, um, in terms of, it was related to my EPQ. My EPQ was on like a virus um, that actually a lot of people have and don't know they have it. And so we kind of talked about how, at what point do you tell people that they've got something if it's not important, when it could become really serious. So that was the kind of one little question I had that was a bit not so sciencey. Um, and then the other interviewer, again they swapped, and the other interviewer asked me about um, like haemoglobin and oxygen binding curves. And again, it was all stuff I'd studied at A-level, it was all concepts that I'd covered before, and also there was a little bit of chemistry in there because we talked about um, there's an equilibrium equation involving like carbonic acid and carbon dioxide, so we talked about that. Um, and then, <laughs> then she asked me to look at, she, uh, Basically, she, she didn't start with the oxygen dissociation curve. She asked me a question about, um, oh, that's right, I remember now. The question was really vague. Again, it was like, how would you feel if you're at the top of Mount Everest? Um, such a vague question, but I was thinking like, okay, they're talking about altitude here and oxygen is different up there. Um, so I quite, I like, quite like that question. Again, it's these questions that really like are vague, but you can tell they're looking for you to take it where you want to take it. And you can kind of tell, if you can pick out one or two things that you think they're going to be looking for, like oxygen and altitude, then you can take that and, and then take it into the science that you've already learned. So we did that, we talked about that, and then I said, well, I think it would impact the oxygen dissociation curve. And then she was like, oh, you mean this? And she pulled out the graph and it had the curve on it. And I was thinking, oh, she's going to ask me about this now. Um, so she asked me about like when it would shift in one direction. And we talked about shifting left for ages. And then I had about three minutes to go until the end of my interview. And then I was thinking, we've only talked about it shifting left. And I actually, I said, when would it shift right? And then she said, will you tell me when would it shift right? And I was thinking, no, this is the question I asked you. But um, I kind of thought, oh, okay, I see what they're doing here. Now they want me to think about it. So we talked about it and thought about it. And, and I didn't have very long left and I couldn't really come to a final kind of answer. And it just slipped my mind, but she told me and then I kind of was like, oh, okay, I see. And then that was the end of that interview and we shook hands and then I left. Um, so that was the actual interview, that was how the interviews went. In terms of the time scale for the interviews, um, so my first interview was, at, I think it was about half past three in the afternoon. Um, so I came up with my dad, we had lunch in Cambridge and then I, like walked around for a little bit. We did actually did a bit of Christmas shopping because it was like the middle of December. Um, and then I had my, I went to the waiting room um, there were a couple of other students in there. A lot of the current Trinity Hall students were there helping out, which was really nice. And they were kind of like chatting to us, oh, how's it going? You know, you'll be fine, just enjoy it. And then I walked to my interview with one of the other medical applicants and he went into the other room. He went into like my second interview while I was in my first one and then we swapped. Um, but there was a bit of a gap between the two interviews. So I think I finished about four. My next interview wasn't until five, so I had an hour's gap between them. So I think me and my dad, we just waited in the waiting room and chatted about it and that was fine. And because I quite enjoyed the first interview, um, I didn't mind waiting and just chatting. So we did that. Now I had my second one at five, finished. At that point, all of the other interview students had gone. Like none of the other subjects were here. It was just me and this other dude that were like being interviewed for medicine. Um, so it was really quiet. Everyone else had gone home. and. Then I just walked around the college and kind of took it all in and thought, wow, this is really nice. There's no other students here. And, but I kind of told myself like, oh, you know, it might not work out, it's fine, but at least you got the experience. And I think that's a really important thing to remember with the Cambridge interview or any Oxbridge interview, whatever it is. Oh, it's just like, it's an experience that um, you're really lucky to get to have and and you probably will enjoy it because it is, if, you're, if you like thinking and intellectually um, being challenged, you will enjoy the experience. It will be fun. Um, might be a little bit nerve-wracking, but just like you will enjoy it. And the thing is, oh, I maybe I was lucky with my interviewers, but they genuinely did seem like quite nice people. They were interested in me, and at the end of the day, they are looking for you. They're rooting for you. They think you're good enough to get in, so they want to see that. Um, so I really enjoyed it. And then I finished my interview, went to Cafe Nero, sat in Cafe Nero, rang my granddad, rang my mum, and told them how it went. Did some more Christmas shopping, and then I think we drove home. Mostly, if I could kind of sum it up I guess it would be oh it was over really quickly so it goes really quickly and like you'll come out the other end and be like oh, wow I can't believe that was it um number two is fun like it was fun and I did enjoy it and the questions were like interesting and I could see that they were allowing me to take it where I wanted to take it so I'd say it was, it was quite a fun experience and also you just feel so like lucky to even be here 
Um, and then I guess the third thing would be also a bit like a bit weird, a bit vague. So a bit off-putting, you know, they do these things to catch you out, like not making, I mean, I don't know, maybe the not making eye contact with me was just a, he didn't want to make eye contact with me, I don't know. But, um, you know, asking really vague questions, this kind of thing, like, um, I, <laughs> that did feature quite a lot in my interviews, but generally it was, it was a really enjoyable experience. And um, I think anyone that does get an offer and invite to interview is, um, you know, really clever and capable. So just enjoy it. I hope you guys, found hearing my interview process quite interesting but I will highlight even my interview was different to um, all of the other medics that are currently in my year group at Trinity Hall there's seven of us and we all had quite different interviews you know we got asked different questions so I think my questions aren't representative of what you might get asked you might get asked something more physics-y more maths I had quite a lot of biology and chemistry so um, it does vary but generally um, they did ask me about my APQ so it was a little bit tailored to me but most of it was very sciencey. My tips for preparing would be to go over all of your biology and chemistry and maths content and even physics, GCSE if you have. Look over your personal statement the night before. Make sure you know about any sciencey books you've read. And if they don't ask about your personal statement, they won't ask you about anything that you haven't hopefully covered in your A-levels. And if they do, just say, I'm not too sure about this, but, and then take it where you want to take it. Um, but yeah, my number one tip would be enjoy it and think out loud and you'll hear that from any YouTuber that you look up, like they'll say, think out loud. And even if you go on the official Cambridge University YouTube channel about like interviews, it will tell you to think out loud and they're not lying. You should do that. Um, you definitely should, but don't stress, enjoy it, be yourself. Um, it's a lot easier said than done. But if you just go into it feeling like this is an experience that you'll remember forever and feeling proud of how far you've come, even just to get an interview, then you'll probably do quite well. If you guys want to know anything more about interviews at Cambridge um, or kind of like the application process, I'm happy to do another video. But my number, uh, my, my big thing, maybe not my number one thing, because my number one thing would be enjoy it. My big thing is that you don't need to go on some kind of like 100 pound, 200 pound course. Um, they are looking for candidates who can do it themselves and you're not going to have 200 pound courses for you when you're a Cambridge medical student they want to see that you can do it yourself so I would just say believe in yourself you can do it enjoy it think out loud uh, revise your content look at your personal statement and then hopefully um, if they like how you think and what you say then you're in with a shot so best of luck to everybody that has interviews this year um, and anyone that's applying in the future and hopefully I will do another video very soon on the medical school application process and interviews to all of the other medical schools. So yeah, bye.